See, well, first of all, congratulations to you. Thank you. Two filmmaking questions. I have so many things I want to ask you. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm curious about the hyperspeed moments. I know there's CG clearly, but when you start the shot. No, that was shot, not CG. I actually did, did it. Yeah. But when you start the run and end the run, yeah. in the sense of, like, do you have to run into the end of it? How do you do that as an actor? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, no, it's kind of like you, you know, I would start the action of moving wherever that. The, where the beginning of the you know the super speed would kind of start and yeah. then I would yes then we, you know by the end of wherever that was I would kind of like ramp <laughs> down into you know I the the real the first time we did it was I think the mugger where I actually kind of you know when I run up and accidentally knock him out <laughs> basically because I don't know how fast or strong I am and uh, that was kind of an interesting thing because it was it was like two steps and also hitting somebody. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a very uh, fun way to puppet myself, yeah. I suppose. And you, the light on the actual suit that was really practically there, right? Oh, it looked one, like it was, yeah. yeah, yeah in the yeah, sense 100%. of like, did that affect your lighting and your scenes at all? Totally, yeah. Which which was the point, by the way. Um, David and our incredible uh, David F. Sandberg, our incredible director, and Maxime, our incredible DP, have put a lot of thought into the practical lighting of the suit and how they might be able to use that to, you know, color my face from time to time with the glow of it or other people, like when, when Jack is first seeing yeah. it, and, oh, which is so cool. I love how it it's almost like elasticity, you know, yeah. like- uh, I love his reaction. <laughs> yeah. I love that laugh yeah, he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, I mean, it's just, it, it was super, super cool. It was also super, Uncomfortable lingerie. It is not. It is not. <laughs> it is not comfortable lingerie. It is a tight suit that has that was packed with wiring and all that jazz to do all of that. So, if we're blessed enough to get a sequel, I'd like to talk to well, them about how do we do this and make it more comfy. Well, I want a sequel. Now, yeah. I want to see a, a, a moment where Billy Batson meets Chuck because they both have <laughs> extraordinary situations. They're thrown into extraordinary worlds. Yeah, both yeah. of them are. Yeah, yeah. What do you think they would say to each other? Uh, don't freak out. That's what they would say to each other. <laughs> I yeah. want to see that. I want to see the Chuck movie. That's how that. That's how that needs to happen. I would love to, man. I, I I've pitched it to many of the powers that be. People are aware and have been for quite some time that I'm like a dog with a bone. Like I, I'm not gonna let go of that. I'll be a 65 year old Chuck in a movie at some point if that's how long it takes. But I hope it won't take that long because that's a really weird version of that movie. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I think maybe hopefully, you know, if Shazam does well and that gives me a little more clout in the business, maybe then people will be like, oh, well, now we can go do a Chuck movie. I love the video you made a few weeks ago about Brie Larson. Um, I sat down with her for a couple of days oh, a couple yeah. weeks ago for Captain Marvel. And it still blows my mind that both these characters were called Captain Marvel. Um, yeah. it's, I was curious, like, have you spoken to her now that her movie came out, that you have Captain, this movie, Captain or Shazam? I was yeah, yeah, no, I, I haven't spoken to her since the movie came out, but we did bump into her down at uh, CCXP, uh, can, uh, Comic, can, <coughs> Comic Con uh, down in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, and had a blast. You know, we, we, we caught up a little bit on life. I've known brief for actually quite quite a many years I, I, I we don't know each other that uh, that well but through m mutual friends and I've just always found her to be incredibly delightful and talented and very uh, uh, proud of her and happy for all the success that's going on with that and the fact that you know Shazam yes was originally called Captain Marvel and still is considered to be Captain Marvel within the pages of all that lore uh, the irony is not lost on anybody yeah. it's I, I think it's really fun actually I it's a bummer when certain fans can't see the forest for the trees and understand that, yeah. you know, like there's copyrights and trademarks and things and, you know, like, and just embrace that this is still the same heart of, of the character that people have fallen in love with, I yeah. think. That Billy Batson and 1939 Fawcett comic is this same, same lineage and and, uh, uh, and history, it's all in it, it's yeah. all there. Was that dance improv, by the way, that you do in the strength tests? I just wanted uh, to know oh, that. Oh, the floss dance? Yeah, 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 that was, yeah, did you, yeah. The, was that the script? No, no, that was not scripted, no, that was, um, that was, that was me, I don't know, like, throughout the movie, I, I was always trying to be as un authentically 14 as I could <laughs> possibly be, and, so I sat around, you know, at various points, and I was like, well, what would a 14-year-old be doing right now? And then I, and I would constantly see kids at, like, sporting events, and everybody wanted to do the floss. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess that's what a 14-year-old would be doing right now. So I'll try and do that. And I, and I did it a couple times, um, and uh, David captured it and put it in, and I was like, there we go. Oh, that's awesome. Although I do think the floss dance needs to die a horrible death. We don't I, need to be doing that anymore. I think it's awesome. Well, yep. thank you so much. My wife wanted me to give this to you. Oh, slick. It's a Shazam tie bar. Dude, thank you so much. Um, so, so if you wanted to, uh, she thought you'd like that. I'm so. going to put the right yeah. on there right now. You got to do a, a, Now I want one of those. That shirt. <laughs> that, did you do that on your own? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I scribbled it.
That is okay. That's it, pretty awesome. It's all me. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. So, question for you. Um, when we get into your room in the film, like you open up the drawer and you have like there's there's like a there's the newspaper and you have collectibles. If I were to walk into your room, what what's the strangest thing you collect? My me, my room. Yeah. Jack Razor's room. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't really collect anything. You might find, so I was given a penny thing one time. I don't, you might find a lot of socks. I have a lot of socks. <laughs> okay, socks. Do you collect anything uh, interesting? I used to collect baseball cards, um, Pokemon cards. Those, those oh, we might have some Bakugan, thing. some leftover Bakugan from when I used to like Bakugan. That's awesome. Bakugan. Um, I have a filmmaking question for you. The moment when you jump off and do that leap yes. uh, and you yell Shazam, I, I know there's obviously CG and special effects, but when you did that moment, how many times did you have to do it? Did, did you Were you landing on a mat? Like, and did you actually have to like just kind of yell Shazam in a studio? How did you do that Yeah, I did, I did that numerous times, Isn't for sure. Was that a real building, though? Uh, it wasn't, 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 <laughs> wasn't a real building. They, they built it inside the stage, and um, they had pads and the, uh, lots of stuff. But it was scary, to be honest. I really just, I don't know. I, it, was, it was cool. Yeah. Kind of scary. Scorpion thought thing. I was going to hurt myself. I know, like a full squir a scorpion thing, yeah. David was like, how did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Sure, I broke, my, I broke my leg when I did it, but you it's fine. You kicked yourself in the head. I almost kicked myself in the head, head. yeah. Um, it was really cool. Like, yeah. That was like probably that's probably like one of my favorite moments in the movie. So. One of the coolest scenes in the film is obviously when you're in the convenience store and the bullet stopping is my favorite. Yes. I love that moment so much. You're filming things throughout the strength tests. Do you actually have that footage? Did you actually shoot that on a phone or like a yes. camera? Yes. Where is that I, stuff? Well, it wasn't my phone. <laughs> Great question though. Uh, it, we they gave me a prop phone. They had me film it though because they were thinking that they would upload it to, and use it in the film. But I don't know if they did. They filmed myself filming the. The, can the him doing it, but also that was a that that scene was the first scene we me and Zach both filmed in the movie. Really, so we were pretty fresh to to that it's like scene already. That's pretty yeah. cool. Um, I'm curious the moments when obviously you yell Shazam and then he and then you go and then he, Zach comes into the shot. Um, were you actually on set the same time when you did those moments? And yeah. also, did you watch each other's dailies to figure out like what movements you guys were gonna do together? We didn't. Wa I didn't get. I didn't get to watch any dailies. I'm sure Zach did. I'm sure Zach watched the dailies. But we were on. We were on set a couple times doing that. I mean, there were a couple scenes here and there where you know the transformation stuff where we actually had a, sort of had a scene together, which was the um, the the carnival was one. Oh, that's the time I'm referring to. The like, hallway you... one, a uh, school hallway where we walk past the security guard. So he cuts the camera and then you just kind of walk. Uh, walk he, in. So you, he doesn't actually like smoke it and then you actually no, stay in was. one shot. We, no, the, in the in the hallway with the office with the, the detective Mor yeah, Moran. Yeah, right. Moran, Moran, Moran. Uh, <laughs> that's a great scene. Yeah. <laughs> Zach was behind that door, still there. Yeah. And so then Zach, uh, Asher would run by there. Shazam. And then he'd come out. And then when we walk off camera, we would see Asher and he'd be Asher sad because he wasn't in the scene. Yeah. As someone who watching this film, I love the, the bullying thing. To me, was important because I I did it. I was I was bullied in school yeah. very heavily. Uh, I had friends stick up for me, just like your character sticks up for you at one point. I was curious for each of you: is bullying been something that you've dealt with in your lives? Have you had people that have stuck up for you, kind of similar to what your character does? Like, what? How has that experience been for you in school, and then kind of playing it out in a movie? Oh, 100 percent. I've dealt with bullying firsthand throughout my entire life at school. Um, you know, you know, in the environment sometimes, um, but. Yeah, uh, and I, I, whenever I witness a, a bully doing, you know, something, you know, interacting with a, a student that's that's not cool in a, in a really bully kind of thing, um, then I definitely step in and I say something. And also, a really cool thing that I did was <clears throat> I I was making, like, this merchandise and stuff for, for me, but I, I was giving the proceeds to a, an organization called Stomp Out Bullying, mm. and it does its best to eliminate bullying in America. And I think that is so cool. And I don't, but I don't think there will ever be an indefinite end to bullying, because like that's kind of an unstoppable thing. Like you can't end murders or anything. Yeah. But it's it's a serious thing, and I have dealt with it firsthand, and it's so degrading. It sucks, but yeah. it's yeah. And real quick, something you've dealt with at all on that? I mean, definitely. When I used to go to school, I I know, I know there was a few in, a few incidents here and there, but um, it felt really good, you know, that scene where I stick up for Freddie. I mean, I. It's just like it's just it's very empowering, and I think a lot of kids are gonna see that in the movie, and they're yeah. gonna be like, "Wow, like I can do that. I can make a stand." And yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for this movie. I absolutely freaking loved it. Thank I, you. Thank David's you. David's genius. He found a great. Because I absolutely love the film. Um, blown away by the tone of it, but I also felt like the villain, quote unquote villain, uh, was so layered, and I feel like that is an important aspect to kind of connecting to the film and you know suspending your disbelief. Can you talk about 
that backstory and the importance of kind of like learning who this guy is and why he's doing what he's doing. It's so unusual in a film like this to have that backstory, yeah. you know, to give him a place where you can understand where all of this villainy may have come from. Usually villains are very black and white, you're two dimensional. Right. So I love the fact that you had at least an understanding of, of why he was behaving like he was behaving. And what you were saying about um, uh, uh, the balance of, of yeah. everything in it, I think is, uh, that was the thing that I took away from the film. I thought it was a really accomplished movie in the sense that it balances the fun with the darkness, you know, and there is some darkness, which is, I think, necessary, otherwise there's no jeopardy, with the, with the family theme, which is at the heart of the movie, that I was really surprised is pretty emotional. Um, yeah. One thing I love about you as an actor, obviously, like you, we say the word villain, but your character probably doesn't consider himself a villain himself, right? So do you have to somehow justify it in your mind as to why he's doing it? I know we get that story built in, but when you play someone like that, do you kind of have to agree with them in the sense of when you're playing him? Yeah, you do. You have to kind of, no villain thinks they're a villain, yeah. I don't think. Or if they do, they're a moustache twirling baddie, you know, that isn't that believable. I think he genuinely has a beef with the world because of the way he's been treated as a young boy. And without getting too philosophical about it, I mean, he, you know, he feels like he is owed something. Yeah. So um, he's been bullied all his life and now he's going to get his own back. The sequences where you and Zach are fighting in midair are yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, and I, I was thinking back to like, the, it almost looked documentary style, the way David shot it. Like we were capturing this, like somebody was seeing this in real life. I'm wondering when you film those scenes, how do they make it look like you're actually moving? I know there's wires and stuff like that, but like the punches and the movement, like in the sense of like, is it just on wires and like, all angles, but how are those to shoot? Yeah, I mean, they're amazing. They're incredibly hard to shoot because you're suspended on this particular contraption that, bind, that that's literally only fastened you on the hips. There's different kinds of harnesses. It can be wires from the roof if you're up and down, but if you're rolling uh, in a horizontal kind yeah. of mode and then uh, moving forwards, they're literally wheeling you and using the camera to give the idea of speed. And, and when you turn, it's you having to do that. And, wow. uh, you know, Zach and I hung onto each other and punched each other and twirled around <laughs> each other. And the camera's moving around at the same time. So everything kind of gives you that sense of uh, speed. Do they give you anything for the eye in the sense of like on set, is it green? Like do they, is it anything there at all? Or is it just like fully CG when they do it in post? I had a contact lens that had to come in and out before every shot. So wow. there's literally a lens tech who is there making sure my eye isn't giving up the ghost and um, keeping it lubricated and putting the lens in and out before and after every take. 